next principle of design that we'll be discussing this week is balance. Now, balance can really be overused, the word balance, when describing a piece, because sometimes people don't have the words for what they're seeing. They just think it feels good. The piece feels correct. So there are a couple of different ways to achieve balance, but it's also very much a matter of opinion, whether or not your piece has balance or whether you even want your piece to have balance. But some specific terms of balance are symmetrical, which means that on one side of the piece, it's exactly the same as the other side of the piece. So, it holds the exact same weight on both sides. Asymmetrical balance is generally what we use and it can be the fact that you put something detailed and heavy on one side and so you leave the other side blank. So it could be a matter of contrast. It could be a matter of size and value. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, if you do something over here, if you put red over here, then you have to put red over here. There's a lot of things that you can do to make a piece feel complete and balanced without making it feel predictable. Radio balance is when it, it's balanced on all four quadrants. So think of the sun when you think of radial balance. Another one, and then and we're gonna do it today, is mandalas. They're circular. Flowers are radial. I guess a square's radial. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can make like a little design in the square. I'm sure you could come up with something far better than that. But now a cult balance is often seen in Asian art, in Japanese art. They do this very well, but they will have like cherry blossoms and then they will have a lot of empty space. There are some different types of balance, which I think, I, I don't think that you have to get too caught up in making your piece feel balanced because it's just kind of what feels right to you. But I also like knowing that there are different types of balance so that we can throw that in the idea box and say, today I'm gonna design a piece that's symmetrical perfectly symmetrical and see if I can make that work. Or today I'm going to create a radial piece or an occult piece. And so it can give us more ideas on ways to design something. So I like it in my tool belt, but I don't necessarily feel like you have to get caught up in trying to achieve balance all of the time because it really is just what feels right and that 
is naturally what you're going to try to do anyways. All right, for our warm up, I have two note cards today. You can choose one project or the other project, or you can do both. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to play with symmetrical balance. So we're going to fold these note cards in half. On the first note card, I am going to do a butterfly on half of this note card, but I'm gonna try and paint it really thick so that when I fold it in half, the other half of the butterfly will show up. So I'm painting fairly quickly. Well, maybe I'll do a dragonfly. I don't know. I don't know what kind of bug this is. It might be more like dragonfly looking. Except dragonfly's wings are straight. But the wings aren't that big, so I don't know if it looks really like a butterfly. I'm kind of going over it one more time really fast just to make sure I have enough paint on there. Alright, let's hope this works. If I add more paint, I'm going to make sure to smush it again just to make sure that it stays symmetrical. If you would rather do a simpler design like a heart, that's totally acceptable. All right, so we're going to let that dry and then we're going to add some details on top of that. On the next one, I'm going to just fold it, put a couple dots of blue, and then fold it in half and see what we get. It's more fun to me and more spontaneous to try to figure out what the design can be. A little pink goes a long ways. Oh, that's cool. It looks like another type of butterfly. All right, so I'm going to let that dry if I come up with, could be um, an aircraft or a bird with bulging eyes and a long beak. I think it looks the best as a butterfly, but maybe because I already have a bug, I would like to do something different. Okay, I'm going to let those dry and then I will come back to them and add some details. For this next design, we are going to do something with radial balance. So we need to find the center of this piece of paper and this time I'm not even going to tape it down. It just, we don't need to and so I'm not going to risk ripping the, tearing the paper with um, tape when it doesn't need to be taped down. Plus, I think you're gonna wanna be able to move the paper around as you work on this. So to find the center, I am going to match up these corners. My ruler is not long enough 
So I need to find something that's longer than this paper. So I have a, a canvas here that I'm just going to use. And I'm just lightly marking about center here. with my pencil very lightly. And I'm gonna do it the same diagonally on these two corners. So that's about my center. It'd probably be more exact if I had a ruler. So if you have a long enough ruler, use that. Now I'm going to take my circle tape, but if you have a compass, this would be a great time to use it. And I'm going to eyeball that in the middle. I'm going to go around the middle and I'm going to go around the edge. Now, if you have other circles, like a plate or something else, a lid, there are a lot of ways to find circles. Then you can do that. And now I'm going to mark this way, the middle. In the middle this way. Like I said, there are more exact tools that you can use to do this even better. A compass and a protractor are better than what I just did, but also the middle, this is not, this line here is no longer the middle of this circle, so you'll want to adjust that. So that the spacing is the same so that we can actually truly accomplish radial balance. If you haven't guessed, we are going to create mandalas today. And so I'm going to show you a few marks that are really simple ways and then we'll then you can design it however you want to do yours. So a few of my favorite markings are basically think about petals. So that's the most simple petal. Or a pointy one. A more complicated one is where you come in. So this is making mandalas. They can be, it can be a sacred thing. It can be very intentional or it can just be a design. Um, you'll find a lot of cultures will use mandalas in their religious practice. So it is, they're very fascinating to study. In this case, we're just using it um, for fun, but it can also be very meditative and very intuitive. So you're just thinking, what can I do next? How can I connect this row with the next row? So there's a couple of designs and I have my circle drawn out and now I'm just going to start 
from the middle and I'm gonna work my way out. So whatever I do in each space, I'm gonna do it all the way around and that will accomplish radial balance. I'm going to use my pencil first to do the lines because that way I can always erase. And then we'll come in and use crayon to draw the lines and then watercolor to fill in the details. So when I'm doing this, I'm always trying to be consistent. So for this one, I'm just marking the middle of this space. I'm doing curved lines. So I think I'm going to go halfway. For my next row. This is why we use a pencil. <laughs> It's a very slow process. And I'm constantly rotating my paper. I just, it's easier to always work from the same direction for me. That helps me keep it more consistent. I'm just struggling doing that right side every time. If you want to see some incredible works of art, look up sand mandalas and you should see Tibetan monks creating incredible sand mandalas. And the, the craziest part about that is because they're made of sand, they're not meant to be permanent, which is the, the point, I guess them but after making such an incredible work of art <laughs> I wonder if it's hard even for them to let it go when you're doing this Adjust yourself, adjust the paper so that it feels most comfortable for you. Make sure that you're breathing and you're feeling calm and relaxed. If you start to get anxious or you don't know what to do next, just step back, breathe and wait and let the piece reveal it to you. I know that that might sound a little cheesy, but I promise if you sit there and you relax, an idea will come to your mind. And that's what we call 
intuition. When we don't know exactly what to do, and we patiently wait for it to come. We're not very good at that, or I'm not very good at that all the time. I'm getting better, but the more that I practice doing things like this, the more that I get better at doing, at being more intuitive. I'm actually working on a collection of mandalas. And I'm painting them on canvas. So here's one that I've done. And I'm still working on a couple of other ones. I have a really big one here. Um, it's I can't even shoot the whole thing in this in the screen because it's so big. <laughs> but I really I love making these. I really enjoy creating mandalas. I'm trying to figure out how to split this into three. about where three would be. I feel like it could be finished, but because that was the last circle that I had, but I feel I hate not using um, more of the paper. So I'm going to keep going here. I'm just going to try to pay attention to how long these look. Gonna feel a little like a compass rose. So hopefully these lines are going to be light enough. I think I'm actually going to come through and definitely lighten up these middle lines. Because I want to make sure that they don't show up when I do the crayon over the top of them. If you have a sticky eraser, like a kneadable eraser, those work the best. Because you can just 
dab right onto the top of the pencil and pick up and lighten up that graphite. Try not to drag my fingers across the page, especially with pencil, they'll smudge. Hopefully your crayons, well, they should probably be because we haven't used them very much, but are nice and sharp and new. If you don't want to use crayons, you can always trace it with a black Sharpie. So here I'm pre-wetting the area and then I'm going to start with the darker blue along the corner and then I'm going to come back in while it's still wet and do a strip of the green around the curve and then because it's wet it will blend together.
So after the area is dry, I can always add more layers of color. So that's what I'm doing here with the orange in this yellow area. It's dry and I wanted the middle to pop out a little more. So I've put the orange color in on top of the yellow. And then I'm going to take a clean brush. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then I'm going to blend the orange into the yellow with a clean brush. Coming back to our first project, these are dry. Now I'm adding details with crayon on the first card and the second card I'm adding acrylic on one side and then I fold it over so that it just prints on both sides. I love how those turned out. I hope you guys had a lot of fun today. Have a great day.